Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to another English class here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa and I'm one of the English teachers here on Verbling. And if you want to join us, then just wait for the join class button to become available and then click on it. Or, of course, if you have a reservation already, you can use that now. We're going to be doing some reading and also talking. So it's not a very long article that we're going to read, uh, but we're going to read it together just to make sure we understand what the situation is, and then we will discuss it. And I want to hear what you guys have to say. So it's kind of like a reading slash speaking class. So hi, guys. Welcome. Hamid, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm OK. What about you? I am very good. <laughs> good, good. Good. Uh, Hamid, do you know German already? Have, have you learned some German? Or? Mm, uh, in my uh, high school, when I was in ninth uh, class, okay. I learned one year. And also, uh, when I was uh, in my bachelor's in the second year, I went to course. Oh, OK. So, cool. So my level is between A1 and A2. OK, good. Well, now you get to get uh, practice some more. While you're there. Yes, as uh, you know, uh, German is a similar English, so sometimes I compare uh, some words so I can uh, conclude some words' meaning. Right, yeah, that's good. Yeah, use some, some clues from English to help you with the German. Good. And Hamid, are you in Berlin? I'm not sure where you were going. I am uh, in uh, Würzburg, near uh, Nuremberg. Oh, okay. Würzburg, all right. I think I've been there before. Can't remember. Okay. <laughs> Fernando, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. How's Virginia? <laughs> uh, I'm very cold. Oh, really? Yes. It's a uh, cold day here. Oh, wow. Okay. So turn, the weather started to turn colder, I see. Yes. All right. Well, make sure you bundle up. <laughs> <laughs> bundle up means to get on your jacket. And warm clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, Amparo, how are you? Hi, teacher. Doing well, thank you. What about you? Good. Um, how was your weekend? Well, uh, um, Friday was a holiday here because on, on on Thursday was Independence Day of my city. Oh, so we had a, uh, yeah a free day. So uh, we all my family we went to the beach and stayed yeah. there until yesterday. Oh wow, cool, nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we we missed you in the role playing class on Saturday. Yeah, long <laughs> long weekend, and so no Wi Fi. No yeah, Wi Fi on the beach. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you gotta take a break now and then. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I miss the class. <laughs> Another one this week. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. yeah, we had only guys in that class, but uh, Hamid was there and we had fun, so it's always fun. <laughs> I mean that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, Veronica, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Cool. Uh, Veronica, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from Poland. From Poland, okay, cool. Yes. Welcome. And Adrian's showing up and coming into class. Hi, Adrian, welcome. Okay, guys, so uh, we can get started. You know, I usually like to just say hi to everybody as you're coming in and uh, take the first five minutes or so to welcome people, but then we can uh, get started with our lessons so we can use this time that we have together. Um, so for this hour, what I have is this article. It, was, it came across, uh, you know, my news feed on Facebook or something like that, and so I read it, and I thought it would be interesting for us to read. Now, I didn't put it in, so I'm going to just maybe close this here so we don't have to see all the ads all the time. But it's from um, MSN News, so Microsoft, uh, their news, kind of like Yahoo or something. And um, I thought it was interesting. So I thought we could use it more just to read through it first and to get the idea of the story and then talk about it because I think it's an, an interesting, uh, well, interesting but also kind of scary and too, you know, kind of a sad story as well as we'll read. Um, but let's just go with the title here. 
So the title is says, Woman Exonerated in Murder Case After 17 Years. So the key word there would be exonerated. We would have to know what that means uh, so that we know what this article is about. Does anybody know already what that word means? Exonerated? I think I do. Okay. What do you think it means? Uh, that uh, mm, she's innocent, but um, uh, she wasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of complicated. I don't know how to say it, but um, uh, she was officially uh, made innocent. Yeah. Something like this. Uh huh. So when a person goes to jail, um, or even if you don't go to jail, but maybe you've been uh, committed, somebody accused you of something, but in a legal sense, if you went to actually jail, um, then basically later on, if you have new evidence, they can find you not guilty. So yes, basically it's kind of like officially uh, finding out that you're not guilty, and then, yeah, good, Ampura, you put hook off, yeah, to get take off the hook, you know, let, or let off the hook. So she has been let off the hook or she has been acquitted. That's another uh, legal term when you are acquitted. Usually you are acquitted when you're found not guilty but in this case exoneration is she already was found guilty and now she has been in jail for 17 years and now she's being exonerated. So now they're letting her go because she's uh, being absolved from blame. So she has been found to be not guilty, actually. So that's kind of amazing. Somebody Think of somebody who spent uh, 17 years in jail for something that they actually did not do. So as we can see in the title even already, she was there for murder. So she had been found guilty of murder 17 years ago. And during that whole time, she was in jail, but in fact, she hadn't even done it. So that's what we're going to read about. We'll read the details, and then I want to hear from you guys about this. And, you know, it brings up ideas about our justice system and what does it mean to have a jury find you guilty and how, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so I'll read a little bit and then I'll let you guys read as well. Torrance, California, so that's where it took place. A woman who spent 17 years in prison after being convicted of murder in the death of a homeless man was exonerated Friday by a Los Angeles County judge who said she should not spend another minute behind bars. Okay, Veronica, why don't we uh, start with you, and you can read that paragraph again. We'll, we'll have a couple of turns each, probably, and then we'll go talk, talk about it. Uh, a woman who spent 17 years in prison after being convinced of a murder in uh, the death of a homeless man was exonerated Friday by, by a Los Angeles country County uh, judge who said uh, she should not spend another minute behind bars. Mm -hmm. Good. So a couple of things here. Um, convicted. So convicted means you were found guilty. You went to trial and the jury found you guilty and so therefore you went to jail. So she was or she had been convicted in the death of a homeless man but she was exonerated on Friday in Los Angeles County. So in the United States, we have states. That's the larger regions. And then inside of those states, we have counties. So for example, let me just see if I can find it real quick. Uh, every state in California, you might know, is a very large state. So they have lots of counties in uh the United States. So if you're ever living in the United States or you're visiting, you might hear about the different counties of the areas that you're living in. So this is Los Angeles County. That That's where, of course, like Hollywood is, for example. That's pretty popular. Some of these other counties of California are not as popular. This is the county I was born in, Fresno County, right there. Uh, people are probably familiar with San Francisco. That's up here. Uh, 
in what we call the northern part of California. So San Diego is also kind of a famous place. So we have different counties, smaller regions of a state. Okay. All right. And she said uh, the judge said she shouldn't spend another minute behind bars. So that's another way to talk about being in jail is behind bars. If you say somebody is behind bars, that means they are in jail. That person is in jail. All right. The courtroom burst into applause after Superior Court Judge Mark Arnold overturned the conviction of Susan Mellon, who was to be processed for release from the suburban Torrance courthouse. Okay, I'm it. The count room uh, burst into applause after Superior Court uh, Judge Mark Arnold overturned the conviction of Susan Mellon, who was to be processed for a release from the suburban Torrance Courthouse. Courthouse. Mm -hmm. Good. So burst into applause. So you can, this helps you get an image of what is happening. So the courtroom where everybody is, uh, they're listening and waiting for what the judge is going to say. And then, of course, as soon as the judge says this, everybody starts clapping. And so that's like an explosion or, uh, you know, a burst of energy and noise and this kind of stuff. So they use this expression burst into applause after the judge, so superior court, that's a higher level court system, uh, overturned the conviction. So if you overturn something, you you like uh, you make it the opposite of what it was. So she had been convicted 17 years ago, and now the judge can overturn it, so make it so that she is not guilty. So there was evidence and so he was able to overturn. So that's a verb to overturn the conviction. The noun there, the conviction. Alright, so she was to be processed for release. So she was going to be released basically um, from the suburban Torrance Courthouse. Suburban just means out kind of outside of the city and that's the name of the city there, Torrance in Los Angeles County. All right, Mellon had entered the courtroom in tears, and her children also wept. The judge said Mellon had inadequate representation by her attorney at trial. I believe that not only is Ms. Mellon not guilty, based on what I have read, I believe she is innocent, he said. For that reason, I believe in this case the justice system failed. Okay, Fernando. Yes. You can read all of that. All right. Uh, Mary had entered the courtroom in tears, and her children also wept. The youth said Mary had inadequate representation by her attorney at trial. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that not only is Miss Helen not guilty, based on what I have read, I believe she is innocent, he said. For that reason, I believe in this case, the justice system failed. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you can tell, when you read these sentences, it's a very emotional time. So what does it mean that she entered the courtroom in tears? Uh, she getting crying. She was she was crying. Uh huh. She was crying. Yeah. She was crying, and also her children wept. So to weep is another word for to cry. Oh, so right. yeah, they also wept. So her children, can you imagine? Seventeen years, your mom is in jail. Uh, sh they were also crying. And this is a key line for us in this article. The judge said she had inadequate representation by her attorney at trial, at the trial. So let's see, Fernando, do you understand inadequate? What does that mean? The word inadequate. Uh the um that is bad or mm -hmm. is not the correct form? Yeah, another way might just be like not good enough. Like if something is inadequate, it's not good enough for whatever you're doing. So, uh, for example, if you you have a house 
but the house has inadequate heat, then you're going to be cold. For example, it's not enough. It's not good enough. So we can use this word uh, a lot to describe whenever something isn't, um, we say up, up to par or up to speed, whenever it's not good enough for the reason that you need it. Some, like if something's broken maybe or it's just not good enough. So she had inadequate representation by her attorney. So basically the idea was her attorney, her and lawyer, yeah. yeah, did not do a good job. So we, um, in English we say that your lawyer or your attorney represents you in a case or at trial. And so, the, you're, you know, usually you don't speak for yourself. Your attorney does all of the, the questioning and bringing up um, witnesses. You know, you guys have probably seen uh, lawyer movies. <laughs> we have a lot of them in, in, in English in, in the U.S. But um, so that can be a problem. If your attorney is not very good and he doesn't really or he or she doesn't really know how to bring evidence and support the evidence, then you might not get a, a fair trial or a good decision. So that was the problem. Uh, Hamid, you said insufficient. Yes, inadequate, insufficient, not good enough, bad, <laughs> all kinds of things. So this judge, the new judge here in this new 17 years later, says um, she's not only not guilty but based on. So whatever he's been reading, he thinks she's actually innocent. And <clears throat> excuse me. And for that reason, the justice system has failed. So the justice system refers to our court system here in the United States for how we try to make sure we're not putting people who are innocent in jail. But in this case, it was a failure. Okay, Mellon's case was investigated by Deidre O'Connor, head of a project known as Innocence Matters that seeks to free people who are wrongly convicted. O'Connor said in an earlier interview that she found that Mellon was convicted of the 1997 killing based solely on the testimony of a notorious liar. Mellon, a mother of three, was sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, I'm it. I mean, sorry, <laughs> I'm <puto. laughs> uh, Melin's case was investigated by Dieter O'Connor, head of a, uh, a project known as Innocent Mothers that seeks for free people <coughs> who are wrongly convicted. O'Connor said in an early interview, earlier interview that she found that Melin was convicted on the 1997 killing based solely on the testimony of a notorious liar. Melin, a mother of three, was sentenced uh, to life in prison without possibility of parole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what do you think this means here, uh, Amparo? Innocence Matters. That's the name of their um, project. Uh, I suppose that uh, that these, uh, uh, it's like a foundation something that they just trying to recover information about a, a case that he is supposed to be uh, innocent people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, do you understand the word matters? Like, if something matters, what does it mean? If it matters, if it matters or not? Kind of. Issues, um, like a problem. Mm -hmm. But if something matters, we say that it's important. You know, if we say, "Oh, it doesn't really matter," that means it's not very important. So, innocence is important. We have to really know whether or not who we're putting in jail, if they're guilty or innocent. So that's kind of the, why they named it that way. Mm -hmm. It's important. And so they seek to, they, they try to, they, they want to free people who have been wrongly convicted. So if you have been wrongly convicted, it means it was a mistake. Somehow, for some reason, uh, the conviction was wrong. You were found guilty when actually you were innocent. So that's the idea there. Um, so the reason why she was going after this is because she found out that this lady, Melon, had been convicted based solely on, so to be based only 
on. Solely means just that's it. The no other evidence, but just the testimony of a notorious liar. So what is a testimony, Amparo? Somebody gives a testimony in court. Wait, Song Guan yeah, said uh, um, the wow an explanation and he said that he saw something that is not real in mm -hmm. this case is not real that is the uh, the the statement that he said right yeah yeah if you give a testimony you could do it in court you could do it like uh, in in Congress or something like the presidents or the Congress people give testimonies uh, you could do it even just at school you know if they ask you something you could provide a testimony it's it's your explanation of what you think happened you know like I saw this person doing this you know you're giving that piece of information about something so it's usually uh, in a case and the problem with this is that this person who gave that testimony was a notorious liar so notorious do you guys know that word notorious yes to be famous in a bad way Exactly. You're famous for something negative. <laughs> so you're notorious for doing something that's not good. So like lying, for example. So she was famous for being a liar. So people knew that she was a liar. All right, this is kind of the sad part. I'm, I have three children, so I can't even imagine that I, if I had three children and I was convicted of something I didn't even do, and I was sentenced to life in prison. Sentence means that's what your punishment is. When you get convicted, then you receive a sentence or you get sentenced to something. Uh, life in prison without possibility of parole means you'll never get out. Parole is the possibility of getting released. So a lot of times, even if somebody murders somebody, the punishment may be that they have, you know, 20. Uh, 20 years in prison or life in prison but they have a possibility of parole. Parole means they'll check and see if you they think you are better and then maybe you can get out of jail but she didn't even have that so this is like the toughest sentence you can receive besides the death penalty for example. example. Alright, the witness who claimed she heard Mellon confess was June Patty who had a long history of giving false tips to law enforcement according to documents in the case. She died in 2006. Three gang members subsequently were linked to the crime and one was convicted of the killing. Another took a polygraph test and said he was present at the bludgeon killing of Richard Daly and Mellon was not there. Okay. Adrian. Uh, the witness who claimed uh, she heard Mellon confess was uh, Shun Patti, uh, who had a long history of uh, giving false tips to law enforcement according to documents in the, in the case. Uh, she, uh, she did in uh, 2006. Three gang members subsequently uh, were linked uh, to the crime and one was convicted of the killing. Another took a polygraph test and said he was present at the uh, Bludgeon yeah, killing of uh, Richard uh, Daly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh. Yeah. And Mellon was not there. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Okay, so the witness. You guys know what a witness is? Who is a witness? The word, the witness. The person who saw the, the crime. Yes. A witness is a person who sees something, like a, a crime being committed or something like that. So she claimed, this person, she claimed, that means she said, you know, that she heard... Melon confess. So to confess means to tell somebody that you did it. So if you confess to a crime or to breaking the law or something, it means you tell somebody, yes, I did do this. 
Um, but the problem is this lady here, she had a long history of. So this means she has she had been doing this thing a lot of, you know, for a lot of times. And what she was doing is giving false tips to law enforcement. Law enforcement is just another name for the cops or the police. So she would give them false tips or information. She might say, hey, this guy, he over there, he's selling drugs. That's like a tip to the police so that the police will go over there and investigate. But it's a lie. It's false. It's not true. So um, according to the documents. All right, so she died several years ago now. And later, so subsequently means later. So, you know, the, she got convicted of this uh, crime. Then later, three actual gang members were linked to the crime. They were found to have a connection. A link is a connection to this crime. And one of the gang members was actually convicted of the killing. So now they have two people that were convicted of the same killing. And another gang member took a polygraph test. Do you guys have any idea what a polygraph test is? Something that uh, doesn't uh, below that you lie. Uh, yeah. So it's called a lie, lie detector test. So if you take this test, supposedly it knows if you are lying or not. And so this means, you know, that basically if you take the test, then you're telling the truth if it comes out that way. And so he says, the gang member says that this person, Melon, she wasn't even there. She was not there. Um, bludgeon means the way they killed him was with a knife. So to bludgeon somebody is to like use some kind of a weapon like a knife to stab them. So it's kind of gross. It's a gruesome crime, violent crime. All right, so she was not even there at the scene of the crime, we say. In a habeas corpus petition, O'Connor said the police detective who arrested Mellon was also responsible for a case in 1994 that resulted in the convictions of two men ultimately exonerated by Innocence Projects. It said the primary evidence against Reggie Cole and Obi Anthony was the false testimony of an import, oh, sorry, informant who avoided prosecution for other charges in exchange for his help. All right, so here we have a, the bigger problem. Uh, let's see, we had Jorge Luis, you just joined us. Hi there. Hi, hi, teacher. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, good. Would you like to read this uh, two paragraphs here? These two paragraphs? Sure, sure, teacher. Okay, uh, great. In a habits corpus petitions, uh -huh. O'Connor said that that sorry, O'Connor said the police detective who arrested Mellon was also responsible for a case in nine. 1994 the result the result in the in the convictions of two men ultimately exonerated by innocence projects it said the primary evidence against raging Colley and obi anthony was the false testimony of of an inform informant who avoided pro prosecution for 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 other ch charges in exchange for his help mm -hmm. good okay so um, in a habeas corpus petition so this is obviously a legal term but the idea is that you can petition the court uh, to petition them means to like uh, bring some paperwork to the court and say we want you to review this case again because we have some new evidence or, or something like that. So it's a review. And so um, O'Connor, the judge, this new uh, judge, I believe. Yes. Uh, no. The lady. The lady who runs the project. She was saying that uh, the police detective who arrested this woman, Mellon, he was also responsible for another case where two guys were innocent but they had been convicted so they later ultimately they were exonerated but they also had the same problem they went to jail even though they were innocent and this was the same police detective who was involved with that case um, these are the two people who went to jail 
So the primary evidence against them, the evidence against you is like what somebody said or what somebody saw, a testimony or something that gets you convicted. Again, the problem was false testimony. So if somebody was lying on the stand, which is against the law. You're not supposed to do that. You've probably seen you're supposed to swear on a Bible that you're going to provide the truth and nothing but the truth. That's what you're supposed to do. But an informant is somebody who tips off the cops, somebody who tells the cops information. So this person lied on the stand, we say, so in court, to avoid prosecution. So it, to avoid getting sent to jail for another problem, another charge, which is like a crime that they committed. So he wanted to save himself. He lied, and put, and these two guys were found guilty uh, and went to, went to jail. Mellon's youngest children were seven and nine when she was arrested. Although each member of this family suffered tremendously, they remain a close family unit, O'Connor said. One of the daughters was honored by innocence matters for bravery in obtaining a confession that helped to prove her mother's innocence, O'Connor said. Okay, uh, Veronica. Melan's youngest children were seven and nine when she was arrested. Although each member of uh, this family suffered tremendously, they remain a close family unit, O'Connor said. Uh, one of the daughters was honored by Innocence Matters for, for bravery in obtaining a confession that helped to prove her mother's innocence, O'Connor said. Mm -hmm. Okay, so her children were just seven and nine. And uh, one of the links that Hamid put up showed pictures of them, I think, when they were that age. Um, although, so they have suffered tremendously. Tremendously here means a lot or to a great amount. So this family, of course, that's a lot of suffering when your mom goes to jail, especially when she's innocent. She should not even be there. And she's there while you're growing up for 17 years. Um, even though, obviously, that's a huge amount of suffering, they remain. To remain means they stay. So they're still very close as a family unit. So as a family. Um, to be honored by means somebody gives you like a special reward or something and they honor you. They, they recognize you for something that you did. And so one of them was she was honored for bravery. To be brave. To be courageous. To have courage to do something that might be dangerous or difficult and what she was able to do was um, obtain or get so to obtain means to get a confession a confession again is when somebody admits to doing something or not doing something and this confession helped to prove her mother's innocence so it helped to convince the judge that her mother was actually innocent uh, the kids are overjoyed by the news of their mother's anticipated exoneration and are anxious to make up for lost time, O'Connor said. Okay, Hamid. The kids are overjoyed by the news of their uh, mother's anticipated exoneration and are anxious to make up for lost time, O'Connor said. Mm -hmm. Okay, overjoyed. What does it mean, Hamid, to be overjoyed? Uh, to be uh, joyful too much. <laughs> yeah, more like extremely happy, very happy. Yeah, just you're so happy. You know, finally their mom is going to come out of jail. And so they uh, are very, I would say, eager. They're, they really are really excited to make up for lost time. So this is an expression we use when we're you haven't seen somebody for a very long time maybe. And now you want to make you want to make up for it, so you want to kind of uh, do everything you can with that person because you didn't get to do something with them before. So you want to spend a lot of time together and visit and hang out and everything. So here uh, we see some pictures of this is the lady right here who was in jail for all those years, and this was her attorney, the lady who helped finally get her released. Here is the judge, who is, that's what it looks like. These guys wear these robes and stuff. So that's at a uh, court, court, uh, courtroom there in Los Angeles County. And so now she's being released. She gets out of jail. And so there you go. 
All right, so um, before we talk about it, I want to hear what you guys think about this case. Does anybody have any questions um, about the language at all? Any any words you want me to explain again or better or something? Okay, let's before we before we start, Ampuro, why don't you basically tell us the summarize the article for us? What is this article about? How would you tell your friend what this is about? Oh well, this is um, a, a, an article about a woman that was accused of uh, murder a, a guy. Uh, mm -hmm. Seventeen years, it was in prison mm -hmm. um, because his attorney, uh, her attorney, wasn't good enough uh, to defend her. Her, mm -hmm. and she was accused um, for a police man that also have another cases of uh, to accuse innocent people. And mm -hmm. they uh, they were uh, she was in, in prison just with the testimony of a a woman that uh, he uh, everyone know that he was uh, a, a liar. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, the, the the her attorney wasn't good to to uh, to find enough proof to defend her. Mm -hmm. And now there was uh, another uh, woman that he had. Uh, um, like a foundation, something that help people to to, to look for uh, information to to liberate them uh, mm -hmm. from uh, from the prison. And when she was condemned, she she was uh, in prison in life and without uh, uh, any any option, uh, right. without parole. Without parole. Um, now finally, uh, it, it, they they are her daughters. They were uh, just a, a little. Girls, when she was in prison, mm -hmm. uh, when she was arrested, and one of them just uh, uh, fight uh, again to the, the, the system, try to to prove that her mom was innocent, mm -hmm. and finally they they got. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, a little bit uh, more background on this, which Hamid found out, and which I read real quickly. It apparently. Probably one of the reasons why she got into trouble like this, it sounds like uh, when she was younger, you know, she got herself into some trouble. So she actually started taking uh, some drugs. And so she was kind of hanging around probably with the wrong crowd of people. And, you know, if you're in the scene of taking drugs and stuff, uh, you might, you know, have some people that are you know you're hanging around with people who are drug addicts and like this person uh, June Patty like you said she was a habitual liar or a notorious liar so people knew that she was a liar but sometimes um, here in the United States if you're kind of doing drugs and, and you know buying drugs and stuff you might people might just think you're a bad person already so they're not gonna care as much about you so they might you know her attorney uh, here in the United States, if you don't have money to hire an attorney, and of course an attorney uh, costs a lot of uh, money, an attorney can cost a lot of money. If you don't have enough money to hire an attorney, you get uh, what we call a public defender. And sometimes the public defenders they have problems of their own, like they have, they're overworked, they don't make a lot of money, uh, you know, they, maybe they don't have, they can't get all the information they need because they don't have a lot of resources, this uh, type of thing. I'm just looking at this other uh, article here, it gives a little bit extra information. In fact, Daly was her ex-boyfriend. So the person that she was accused of killing was actually her ex-boyfriend. So that might have been another problem here is that they kind of thought maybe it would be logical, this person's taking drugs, maybe she wanted to kill her ex-boyfriend, this kind of thing. So in the article we just read, we didn't get all of the information, but the main information is that uh, the testimony was a lie from the lady who was known to be a liar and um, it resulted in this person getting convicted of a crime she didn't commit and spending 17 years in jail. So, what do you guys uh, think about this? Any comments? <laughs> what do you? 
How do you think? I, when I read something like this, I just think like, how would how would I feel if this happened to me? And I'm just curious, why did it take so long to to have to get help for her? You know, like that's interesting to me. What do you think, guys? Adrian, what do you think about this article? How would you feel if you were in jail for 17 years and you were innocent? Um, I think uh, it's an interesting um, uh, I can <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I um, uh, I know uh, I uh, there, there are several uh, several uh, or similar case. Mm -hmm. uh, Similar case. Of, Similar of, of cases. This. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, yes. The the the, the uh, all all actors uh, actor uh, all all uh, all uh, um, that uh, um, are in this kind of uh, process. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, have a uh, have a uh, have a, 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 a part a part mm. uh, of their responsibility. Um, uh, I think uh, the 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 worst maybe the worst is. Uh, that um, the, um, if you uh, don't have uh, money uh, yeah. to pay a, 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 a good uh, lower um, in the in this system, yeah. uh, you can suffer. Uh, you can suffer. Uh, you could suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this uh, this type of <laughs> this type of, of yes situation problem. yeah this problem yeah. big problem <laughs> big problem okay, yes. Okay. yes yeah yes that's true so one of the problems uh, in our system is this fact that you know some lawyers are really good <laughs> some lawyers aren't very good some people make a lot of money and have money to hire the best lawyers some people don't have any money and cannot afford uh, a lawyer and public defenders sometimes don't have uh, what we call the resources. That means they don't have extra employees to go help them find out more information and evidence and things like that. So, um, and besides that, I found this little graph that tells us of the exoneration. So, of the fact, you know, the the fact that some people are getting found uh, to be innocent, a lot of it happens because of certain reasons. So sometimes is a mistaken ID. So people actually get the wrong person. They made a mistake in um, what the person looks like or who they were. Um, these are perjury or false action accusations. So people lying, basically, telling them like a false testimony, that kind of thing. That's one reason. Another big reason. The biggest reason is that people are actually lying about other people, saying they did something when they didn't. Uh, sometimes maybe that person themselves actually admit or confess to a crime they didn't do. Maybe they think they're going to be tortured or in harm, or maybe they've been threatened. Like if you don't do this, I will kill your child. Or you know, there's are reasons why people uh, lie about themselves even and confess. Uh, sometimes there's also more lies or misleading type of evidence that the jury uh, doesn't understand maybe or they've been lied to about the evidence. And then, of course, we have official misconduct. So that would be the example of a policeman or a detective or a judge or somebody in the system that is not behaving in the correct way. So these are some of the main reasons why somebody might end up in jail who is actually innocent. Fernando, what what about you? How would you feel if you were found guilty when you were actually innocent? 
I don't know. I feel bad. I feel desperate because I mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do for for uh, show my my innocence. Mm -hmm. To show your innocence, yeah. And when I uh, found innocent, I yeah. think that the the uh, you system yeah must must be give me I don't know. Uh, uh, a com a compensate Com compensation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. A compensation because I spent seventeen years of my life in prison for something that I didn't. Right. I uh, I think that this uh mm -hmm. this uh, the EU system must be the that give me a compensation for the 17 years. Right. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you're saying that because I just uh, looked it up in this project here, the Innocence Project. They yeah. uh, they talk about that, and sometimes you do. Sometimes you do get a compensation, um, and sometimes you don't. They recommend that people should be compensated fifty thousand dollars per year. That's what, uh, yeah, but I don't actually know if that's, I have to do a little more research to find out if that's actually happening. Oh, you found something, Hamid, maybe? Uh, yeah. Yes, I found one link uh, about Innocence, Innocence Project. Okay, uh-huh. So some, some financial compensation, it does happen. It, All right. Yeah. But yeah, you, could, you know, because not only think about all the things that you missed. I mean, you missed obviously living outside normal life, but you uh, spend time with your children. Yeah, spending time with your children. Uh, also, you didn't have a job, so you weren't making any money. You know, you didn't have yes. any income. And yes. for it, Americans, especially, you didn't even have a chance to. Um, save like for retirement because as we can see and as Hamid wrote she has gray hair now so she's older you know it's not usually that easy for people just to go get a job now you know especially if you say I've been in jail for 17 years you know people will try try to understand what happened you know so uh, yeah so definitely they probably that's probably the next thing is that they're going to figure out how much money to give her because she definitely needs some help. Yeah, she's 59 years old, so she could work, but who knows what kind of skills she has now and that type of thing. So. Also, yeah. Lizard, uh, yeah. there can be some social aspects. I mean, for example, uh, when she is outside, everybody can uh, look at differently as a first time. Exactly. Yeah. Because because. Uh, uh, for uh, for some uh, uh, changes uh, for our lives, we can uh, separate uh, two things after and before. So, for example, in uh, previous life, everybody uh, was uh, disliking her, but now uh, she cannot uh, predict uh, people's uh, reactions uh, on uh, herself. Yeah, to her, re her uh, reactions to her, yeah. Yes, so right. uh, for example, she can try to find a job, but uh, if I, probably, she will go to first time uh, some known people's sites, but yeah. uh, they, they, feel, uh, they will feel mm -hmm. not uh, good right. the first time. Right. Yeah, they might have some concerns or just questions, and yeah, it definitely, you know, puts her in a, a down position. Like it's not just like a normal person having all the chances that you have. So, yeah. So, um, Hamid, what what do you think about this? Uh, how would you feel if this happened to you? Of course, it is hard uh, situation. Also, I wrote uh, to Verbling chat uh, with, one, with one mistake. Yeah. Our life uh, can turn uh, from uh, to heaven to the hell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, what, it just seems like how could she not be so mad? You know, like some 
mad about the system, mad about this person who lied about what she, you know about her. You know, it would really yes, but we don't know uh, her uh, previous. I mean, her jail life. Maybe she tried many efforts, uh, some doing uh, things, but yeah. maybe uh, she could not uh, make her voice he uh, hear heard. to others. Yeah. Right. Heard uh, to others. So uh, we just uh, see this moment. Uh huh. Yes. Her life. Right. Yeah, we don't know how long she's been trying or what they had to do. It could be a very long process. It you know sometimes is trying to go through the court system and everything. Um, Veronica, which which one are you talking about, Damien? Echoes, what happened to Damien? Yes, uh, I've got a book uh, written by him, oh. uh, and he's also American, and uh, he was uh, he received uh, the mm. and he spent in jail uh, more than seventeen years, almost uh, eighteen, wow. and uh, uh, then uh, uh, they released him, and uh, now he's free, but. Uh, he got married in jail and he was there for a really long time and yeah. he must have been really stressed because they, they could uh, they could kill him anytime in fact yeah right and so what happened do you do you know what happened finally how did they uh, let him go what did they find out that changed um, it generally it was uh, it was fault of society they they needed uh, they needed a scapegoat, and uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, there were there were three uh, teenage boys uh, that were accused of of the murder, and uh -huh. he was the oldest one. And uh, there weren't enough um, enough witnesses and um, and nothing that could um, really say if he is uh, uh, if uh, he is guilty or not. But uh, but he was uh, sentenced. Wow. And uh, yeah. And so now he's out of jail. Yes. Now he's out of jail. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm wow. So w when the book in the book that you read about it, what does he say about it? Uh, he it's generally very long. It has uh, I'll tell you in a moment. It has five hundred. Uh, 500 pages. Wow. <laughs> so it's quite a, a long one. Yeah. Um, but uh, he seemed to be. Um, it's uh, I. Um, I read it as uh, a normal book. It's uh, not very emotional or, oh. or something. He's uh -huh. very distant to this part of his life. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. So did, he was found not guilty then? Like they didn't yes, actually do yes. this? Okay, I see. Did they figure out actually who did it? Because they were charged with killing three kids, right? I, I'm not sure, in fact. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But, but for sure he's innocent. He's innocent, okay. Yeah. Wow. That's terrible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jorge. Jorge Luis, have you ever read a story about this before? Has this ever been something that you've read about, or is this new? No, well, here I live in Mexico City, and it happened. Mm. I have heard about some similar case, and this case scared me a lot because I spent uh, 17, 17 years in jail for something you never did. Is sounds like sounds sounds like creepy. So it yeah. scared me. It scared me a lot, teacher. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Amparo, what what do you think about this? Have you heard about these kind of things happening in in Ecuador? I mean, basically, it's mm -hmm. happening because people are are lying, <laughs> and and no. somebody, you know, you're kind of like the victim of the lie, you know, or something. Yeah. Yes, I, I think and yeah, and victim of the lie and victim of the prejudice because uh, because of the the woman had the the his vice her biases 
Mm -hmm. um, they just they, they conclude that she could be the the guilty, and they right. don't they didn't find out uh, more more uh, find out uh, more evidence. Um, mm -hmm. Probably the 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 attorney the and the the lawyer that he he she was assigned. She she he didn't uh, want uh, to to find out so much. He just think that she was the guilty and that's why she she was in prison for a long time but i i think now she she can sue the the, the state because of that um, uh -huh. maybe she get uh, she can get money but uh, that is uh, isn't enough for all the things that she has missed uh, he, yeah. he the relation with her children uh, Probably is not going to be the same, even when they, she have been, uh, they have been uh, supporting and her her mom. Right. When you have been living in in in, in a in a prison, the, the life is totally different. Probably, yeah. sure. you don't know if she is going to be a better or a worse person than when she <laughs> that she was before, yeah. because. Um, uh, Probably it, it, she had a lot of uh, resentment, and bitterness, mm. um, and maybe she she got a, a worse a, a habits inside of the prison. You don't know. Um, yeah. Probably the the state is going to be responsible for a, a, a monster then, uh, because they they they, they create. Uh, uh, a, a bitter uh, mm. uh, person. Person, yeah. Yeah, you know, no, some people in jail have like amazing transformations and life, you know, life changing events, yeah. but some people, yeah, it's not a very nice place to live. Other, you know, if you're there, especially if you're not really mm. a criminal and you're living with criminals, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Veronica, what do you think about this? You know, it's weird. Hamid, you found something else and another person. Uh, 17 years. So I don't know what the deal is with 17 years. <laughs> it's like it takes that long to prove that you're innocent or something. That's terrible. I don't know. I don't know what is it, but but it's really really long. In fact, yeah. I'm I am 18 years old. So oh my gosh! Yeah. Almost all my life. <laughs> <So> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Imagine. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's really when you think about it like that, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah, did you guys ever see the movie uh, Shawshank Redemption? That's a yes, yes, definitely, yeah. many similar, times. Similar kind of thing. Yeah, can be very difficult. Yeah, to get out of jail. Once you're in there, people just assume that you're guilty, and it's really hard for the people to listen to you and to hear new evidence, even if it's the truth. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody have any other uh, last minute? comments about this? I have interesting comments. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, we can, uh, it can be opposite thing. I mean, uh, it depends on the uh, people's uh, friends. Uh, for example, if I find uh, good uh, friends, I can uh, start to write my life in the uh, jail. So mm -hmm. I can uh, publish a book so I can make money with this way. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. You did have, you do have a story now to tell, and it could be that you can uh, make money writing your story and selling a book or something. Yeah, making a but movie. You know how yeah. how the world has uh, evolved when you were inside uh, the technology. Right. Everything. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The internet thing. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, uh, DNA is very important. Uh, Proof, uh, technical, technique, and nowadays. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, yeah, maybe, you know, there are better tests nowadays, but, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes in the United States, the jail system, depending on where you live, it can be um, busy. You know, lots of, lots of uh, stuff going on, and if your state doesn't have very much money, and so, you know, lots of problems in the jail system here in the United States, in the court system, and so, unfortunately, but luckily, she got out, so it's better than not <laughs> getting out, so. Okay, guys, thanks for coming to class. We, we have finished, so I want to let you guys go, and I hope you have a, a good day.
Okay, teacher, okay. take care. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, in my bachelor's, in the second year, I went to course. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. So my level is between A1 and A2. Okay, good. Well, now you get to get uh, practice some more while you're there. Yes, as uh, you know, uh, German is a similar English, so sometimes I compare uh, some words so I can uh, conclude some words' meaning. Right, yeah, that's good. Yeah, use some some clues from English to help you with the German. Good. And Hamid, are you in Berlin? I'm not sure where you were going. I am uh, in uh, Würzburg, near uh, Nuremberg. Oh, okay. Würzburg. All right. I think I've been there before. can't remember. Okay. <laughs> Fernando, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. How's Virginia? <laughs> uh, I'm very cold. Oh, really? Yes, it's a cold day here. Oh wow! Okay, so turn the weather started to turn colder. I see. Yes. All right. Well, make sure you bundle up. <laughs> <laughs> bundle up means to get on your jacket and warm clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, Amparo, how are you? Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to another English class here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa and I'm one of the English teachers here on Verbling. And if you want to join us, then just wait for the join class button to become available and then click on it. Or, of course, if you have a reservation already, you can use that now. We're going to be doing some reading and also talking. So it's not a very long article that we're going to read, uh, but we're going to read it together just to make sure we understand what the situation is, and then we will discuss it. And I want to hear what you guys have to say. So it's kind of like a reading slash speaking class. So hi, guys. Welcome. Hamid, hi. How are you? Hi, I'm OK. What about you? I am very good. <laughs> good, good. Good. Uh, Hamid, do you know German already? Have Have you learned some German? Or? Mm, uh, in my uh, high school, when I was in ninth uh, class, okay. I learned one year, and also uh, when I was. We would have to know what that means, uh, so that we know what this article is about. Does anybody know already what that word means? Exonerated. I think I do. Okay. What do you think it means? Uh, that uh, mm, she's innocent, but um, uh, she wasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of complicated. I don't know how to say it, but um, uh, she was officially um, made innocent. Yeah. Something like this. Uh huh. So when a person goes to jail, um, or even if you don't go to jail, but maybe you've been uh, committed, somebody accused you of something, but in a legal sense, if you went to actually jail, um, then basically later on, if you have new evidence, they can find you not guilty. So yes, basically it's kind of like officially uh, finding out that you're not guilty, and then, yeah, good, Ampura, you put hook off, yeah, to get take off the hook, you know, let, or let off the hook. So she has been let off the hook or she has been acquitted. That's another uh, legal term. Okay guys, so uh, we can get started. You know, I usually like to just say hi to everybody as you're coming in and uh, take the first five minutes or so to welcome people, but then we can uh, get started with our lesson so we can use this time that we have together. Um, so for this hour, what I have is this article. It was it came across, uh, you know, my news feed on Facebook or something like that. And so I read it, and I thought it would be interesting for us to read. Now, I didn't put it in, so I'm going to just maybe close this here so we don't have to see all the ads all the time. But it's from um, MSN News, so Microsoft, uh, their news, kind of like Yahoo or something. And um, I thought it was interesting, so I thought we could use it more just to read through it first and to get the idea of the story 
and then talk about it because I think it's an, an interesting, uh, it, well, interesting but also kind of scary and too, you know, kind of a sad story as well as we'll read. Um, but let's just go with the title here. So the title is says, Woman Exonerated in Murder Case After 17 Years. So the key word there would be exonerated. Hi, teacher. Doing well, thank you. What about you? Good. Um, how was your weekend? Well, uh, um, Friday was a holiday here because on, on, on Thursday was Independence Day of my city. Oh, so we had a, uh, yeah, a free day, so uh, we, all my family, we went to the beach and stayed yeah. there until yesterday. Oh, wow, cool, nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we we missed you in the role-playing class on Saturday. Yeah, long, <laughs> long weekend, and so no Wi-Fi no uh, Wi on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> well, I take a break now and then. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why I miss the class. <laughs> Another one this week. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, we had only guys in that class, but uh, Hamid was there and we had fun, so it's always. Good. <laughs> I miss. <that. laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, Veronica, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Cool, uh, Veronica, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from Poland. From Poland. Okay, cool. Yes. Welcome. And Adrian's showing up and coming into class. Hi, Adrian. Welcome. 